Hello students, I am gone today again for a track meet, so I wanted to make this video to go over the homework uh, that you did and turned in last Thursday. Now there are a number of you that I did not get that from, um, so you'll need to make sure you complete everything as well as uh, some additional problems that will be due by Wednesday. So I'm missing that from Ross, Ty, Sydney, Ethan, Ty, Riley, Lane, uh, Daisy, and uh, I guess those ones there. So um, if you have questions about that, let me know. Um, but there will be some additional problems that you guys need to complete. Just want to quickly go through these uh, homework problems. Um, it was kind of a mixed bag of understanding from what I could tell. And obviously, you got your homework returned to you. I wrote as uh, many comments as I could on there to try and help, but wanted to do this to quickly uh, also go over some information. So I, I just want to start with number two. Uh, some of us aren't reading the directions very carefully um, and answering all parts of the question. So make sure you're doing that. Number two, find the x-intercepts for each of the following functions. And then additionally, will the vertex lie above, below, or on the x-axis? And finally, find the vertex and sketch the graph labeling the x-intercepts. So the first thing I want you to understand and be able to recognize in 2b is the one I picked out. You got to pick which two you did. I just picked b for an example. I want you to recognize that this is in uh, factored form right so this idea of finding the x-intercepts requires us setting y equal to zero and then oops 2x and then all you're doing from here is setting each one of those factors equal to zero so zero equals one minus 2x and then the other one zero equals x plus three so you're solving these negative 1 equals negative 2x, divide by negative 2, you get x is 1 half, and over here, x is negative 3. All right, so those are our two x-intercepts. That's the first part of the problem. They asked us to graph those, uh, so an x-intercept of 1, 2, 3, negative 3, and then positive 1 half right there. Now, the question is, how do we know? Is the vertex above it, so that's opening downward, or below it, so it's opening upward? Because this a value is positive, okay, we can know that this parabola is opening upward. So we know our vertex is somewhere down here. Our vertex is below the x-axis. Okay, and finally, uh, Sketch the graph labeling the x-intercepts. Um, we should be able to find the actual x-axis, or sorry, the vertex by, remember, it's got to be exactly halfway between our x-intercepts there. So um, we have a total distance of 3.5. Half. half of 3.5 is 1.75. So 1.75 units this way of negative 3 puts us at negative 1.25. So at negative 1.25 is the x value of our vertex. We can find the y value by taking negative 1.25 and plugging it into our function. Okay, By plugging that in for x here and x here, and then evaluating that. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now, but that's how you would find your vertex, the y intercept or the y value of your vertex. Okay, so. Wherever that is, somewhere down here, that parabola will be opening up just like that. Okay. Nextly, next, I want to talk about number four, um, making a quadratic function with zeros at x equals 1 and x equals 2. When they give you the zeros, that's a key for using factored form. And this is our general factored form that we talked about where r1 and r2 are roots or zeros or x-intercepts and so in this case when they give you those all you do is you put well there's where you put one in for r1 and two in for r2 and basically then you just have to pick an a value and this is what part b is saying uh, if i made a b1 well that's that works that's a function with zeros at 1 and 2. 
but I could easily have made that a 2 or a negative 4 or any other number I wanted to choose. And that's just going to affect how skinny or how wide that parabola is, but it's still going to cross the x-axis at the, the same two points. Okay, Or if it's going down, right? All that's going to be affected by that a value. Okay, So that's what part B was trying to get at. A lot of you didn't think of that. And so you're talking about it could be in a different form, but the form doesn't have anything to do with it. It's that a value there. All right. Uh, stay with me here. Number seven. Now you were solving these by using the quadratic formula. Um, I went through the quadratic formula in another video. Um, and that's pretty straightforward. It's just knowing how to plug the values in. And so I don't think I'm going to spend a lot of time actually doing that again. The thing I just want to point out is when you're doing like 7a and you have 6t squared minus 7t equals 5, in order to use the quadratic formula, you have to have one side equal to 0. So in this case, I would just subtract 5. And you get one side equal to 0. You're solving it. You're trying to find what t equals. So this is where you identify a, b, and c and then plug it into your quadratic formula. Okay, and again, I'm not going to take time to do that right now, but um, I think most of you are, are seeing that and understanding that well. Um, you know, something like H, 7H. minus 3 squared equals 7. Right? In order for you to solve this with the quadratic formula, you got to move that 7 over. But then you also have to recognize that, well, this is not, uh, this is not in a form. This is not in standard form. It's got to be in standard form. And so I'm going to have to multiply this out. So I got 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 9 minus 7 equals 0. 4x squared minus 12x plus 2 equals 0. Now that I've done that work, now I can take my a, b, and c, put it into the quadratic formula and solve it. So some of us have to be willing to spend a little more time doing the work to put it into, in this case, the standard form that you need for the quadratic formula. Um, I think I'm going to skip over 9 just for the sake of time here uh, and go directly to number 22. Um, so 22 was asking uh, you to, uh, let's see, put it constructed in vertex form, okay? And it was giving you the x-intercepts of 4 and 8 and a y-intercept of 32. And then it said, put it in vertex form. Okay. Well, the problem is with x-intercepts, it doesn't work to go directly into vertex form. You really need to use um, factored form first because they give you the roots, right? So we always want to put our a first. And then x minus the one root was 4. The other root was 8. Um, and then it said it had to have a y-intercept of 32. So the y-intercept of 32 really means you're at the point 0, 32. That, that's a point on your graph. Okay. So what you would do in this case is you're trying to find A, essentially. Um, so you could do plug 0, or sorry, 32 in for y, 0 in for x, and so you get a equals or a times negative four times negative eight is thirty-two, and then you divide by thirty-two and you get one. So a is one. So all of that now you know a is one. So I don't really have to put it. But now I have x minus four times the quantity x minus eight. Now we still got to get this into vertex form. All right. So I distribute there and I get x squared minus 8x minus 4x is minus 12x 
and then plus 32. Yep, there's my y intercept of 32. That all looks good. Now we get to complete the square. Maybe I'll do that on this one here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, I have y equals x squared minus 12x plus 32. So what I'm going to do here, completing the square, I'm going to take, see I don't need to factor out anything, but I'm going to take minus 12x. I'm going to leave my space. Okay. Half of 12, sorry, half of negative 12 is negative 6 squared is positive 36. And if I added 36, I have to turn around and subtract 36. So that leaves me with x minus 6 squared minus 4. Okay. So um, I have, um, yeah, I put it into vertex form. So now I can easily identify my h is the 6 and my k is the negative 4. So there's my vertex, the point 6 comma negative 4, and I am done. So uh, hopefully that helps with some of the homework. That's all I got. Have a good day.